Today in the episode, Mad Lab. We try to rebuild the starter vehicle for maximum efficiency using only starter parts. Voice of the Wastelands, where we read your messages and choose the craft of the episode. And we start with Building 101, how to make your ramming vehicle do no damage at all. Remember that blessed day when we talked about secret techniques of making a completely worthless car? Well, today is the day when we go even further in our journey to wasteland perfection with a guide on ramming vehicles that do as little damage as possible, preferably no damage at all. Let's start with the basics. Never use parts that deal damage in melee, as simple as that. Bumpers, grater blades, plows, that's for the weak. Real survivors rely solely on light frames, fragile construction parts, grills, and decor. Especially decor. Obviously, we mount all that on the slowest cabin we have, and the weakest wheels available. Next up, no useful hardware whatsoever. Tormentors? Meat grinders? Shivs? What are you even saying? Are you one of those pitiful guys that ram on anything but the glorious hover, the alpha and omega of all ramming builds? Thought so. And forget about engines that boost your speed or cloaking devices and all that trash. We don't need it, no sir. And the worst thing you can possibly do is outfit your vehicle with a booster, let alone use it. This is a grave insult to all true rammers out there. What, you're planning to go into combat on a vehicle that is both fast and heavy? Why though? You know very well that the faster and heavier you are, the more damage you deal on impact, which means that it's completely worthless to us. And please, throw the tusk away. No additional damage in this house. Just imagine, you can actually kill someone with the cursed thing. You'll never forgive yourself. Now let's take a look at our hull. An effective ramming vehicle should be able to take a lot of punishment. So naturally, we have to use the flimsiest cabin we have. Ah, the starter one's perfect. And again, no sturdy parts allowed. You have to remember, ours is the way of light frames and fragile parts. Now a few words about tactics and strategy. We don't need any of that. Don't even try to pick up speed in combat, and don't you dare ambush anyone. If an enemy fails to notice you, approach slowly and deliberately, then honk to give them a heads up. And only then maybe go for a ram. That's just common courtesy. You know what? Forget about ramming altogether. What's our end goal? to deal as little damage as possible. It makes perfect sense then to go out of our way to avoid actual confrontation. Yet, yeah, even if you need to push an enemy off your zone, let them have it, they probably need it. Be kind to each other. Isn't compassion the sole reason you built your rammer in the first place? Okay, now on to a slightly more serious note. Here's a challenge. Take a long, hard look at our advice here, do the exact opposite, and try to build an effective ramming vehicle that looks like the letter G because it's for garage, of course. Upload your builds to the exhibition and we'll show you the best ones in one of the next episodes. And now, a short commercial break. A new song by Psycho Pete blew you up yesterday. I'm coming for a second round. Now out on audio tapes. For our new experiment, we have to go back, way back. Do you remember your first ever wasteland car? Yup, this one. What we want to do is to take the starter vehicle apart and rebuild it using the same starter parts for maximum efficiency. Can we make something remotely dangerous just with the equipment you get at the beginning of your journey? Let's see. You probably don't remember this, but you can't deconstruct your first ride right from the get-go. You have to go into your first fight on that old clunker. After that, you have to make a new machine gun, then mount it on a predetermined spot in your car, and then, instead of going into the next fight, we return to the garage and finally start tinkering. Okay, what do we have? A cabin, two 2x4 frames, three 4x4 frames, four wheels, two hornets, one cord, two fenders, a side of a van, and a car jack. That's it. The plan is to go all meta. We move our cabin to the back, our frames right to the front. We put our turning wheels right under the cab. This way, we'll still have a bit of maneuverability even if enemies shoot our front wheels off. Now, the most important thing, we use the empty space in the front to create a defensive structure for our machine guns. We start with the van side, like that. 
put a Hornet behind it, then our wheels, and a car jack. It's quite durable, in fact, and makes for a nice platform for a fender and a cord. Finally, we mount our last Hornet on the hood of the cab and behind another fender. Take a look. Our weapons are not easy to take out all at once, and they can be fired simultaneously. At least when you're aiming at something in the front or to the side. Not bad. Let's see how our Frankenstein's monster performs in combat. Obviously, at this power score, no one will try to fry us with a massive ball of plasma or rain missiles on us. Most players are relying on their cords and hornets to get the job done. But there's still a very important thing we can do to maximize our chances of survival. Prioritize enemy weapons. Your opponent's got nothing left? Switch to the next target. Disarming enemies should be our top priority. One, two, three, and it's done. It's likely that after this fight or two, you're going to get quite a lot of extra parts. Ugh, the blessed times of fast reputation gains. At level two, we can use only up to 20 parts, which means that we can only add three parts to our vehicle right now. We are going to use the whale back because it's pretty durable, the bumper, it's perfect for buffing us in the front, and one more van side. Now we have even better defenses and HP for days. It might not be the prettiest vehicle out there, but it's sure as hell fun to ride in battle. Was the experiment a success? Yeah. Obviously, we can't say that our monstrosity is leagues above the regular starter vehicle, but this good old car certainly got a lot more dangerous. And if it has a good enough driver, oof, enemies beware. When everybody has pretty much the same equipment, the difference in power is plain to see. The first message comes from a survivor called Al Coutinho. On the acid map, do you intend to change the damage mechanics of the lake? Uh, currently, when touching the acid, the damage goes to the cabin, regardless of the piece you touch the acid with. Wouldn't it be more interesting and make more sense if it was the part dipped in acid that was destroyed? Hey mate, yeah, this is on our to-do list. It's a bit tricky to implement though. We'll do our best, sooner or later. Then there's this question sent by Zintar's Gamer. Could you add a custom game mode maker? It would be very cool. Plus, if a game mode is very successful, then it could become an official game mode. Hey, Zintars, this is a brilliant idea, no lie. But right now, we can only say that we're discussing it with the team. That's not much, we know, but that's how it is. User Nubis asks, Have you guys ever considered adding a feature where you could customize and adjust the minimum and maximum angle limits on the mounted weapons on our vehicles? Hi! We think we've stated it before, but one of the core principles of our game is that building a vehicle should be really accessible. And a part of that is no additional tinkering is ever needed to make a part work. You just strap it on your car and you're ready to go. Adjustments and non-cosmetic customization go against this principle, so it's not something that we consider for implementation, at least for now. Next question comes from Mathis Builder. Will the founders ever come back? Maybe. There's a possibility that it might happen. The wastelands are harsh, though, and no promises can be made. And then there's this message, sent by DJ Count Van Pony. A serious question, I guess. Do you think the current population will ever solve their differences peacefully and start rebuilding the wastes instead of trying to kill each other? Also, who created the crossout and deployed it? Excellent questions, my lord. The problem is, most survivors aren't really interested in looking for a peaceful resolution for Wasteland's countless troubles. Compassion's risky, to say the least, and trying to negotiate instead of going in with all guns blazing is widely regarded as a sign of weakness. Given that the land can barely feed the population, there's no shortage of people who rob and kill others to ensure their own survival. As for the second question, this is still a mystery. Some say Riley might know something about it. Others say that the mortuary was a big part of it. Who knows? And now the last and certainly the most wholesome part of our show. We pick one craft from the exhibition that we fell in love with during the last two weeks. Today we have a rather unusual vehicle, but we guess that's to be expected from us by this point. We give you a ship worthy of sailing through the deadly sands of the wastelands. The Cobra Bell by Master Babach212. First of all, it's pretty. 
Second of all, we really dig the way it operates. Yeah, it's not big on smooth sailing, but it works. Or maybe we're just longing for hot sands in our land of snow and howling winds. Babach212, thanks for transporting us back to summer for a moment or two. That's it for today. Tell us what you think, ask us questions in the comments below, and after we finally stop tinkering with the starter vehicle, we'll get back to you with answers and more awesome content. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, leave a like, and good luck!